Support for the Civic Sci TV network comes from viewers, readers, and listeners like you. Visit civicsci.tv.org to learn more. In an upcoming segment, host of Civic Sci TV's Questions of the Day program, Dr. Fanuel Mwindi, visits the Biological Engineering Communication Lab at MIT to meet with the program director, Dr. Diana Chen, to decode their programming and the lessons they are learning. Join our ongoing special series of conversations with leaders of training programs as we break down how they are empowering scientists with skills to engage with their local communities. And if you missed it, Jake Krause continues his weekly three-minute civic science news briefings, now with a focus on the environment. Here's a snippet from last week where he explored the fascinating world of insect art and poetry, discussed disaster preparedness efforts in Puerto Rico with new communication tools, and gave us a preview of the upcoming SciTalk 2025 conference. In issue 19 of Consilience, the science and art magazine, the spotlight is on the incredible world of insects, vital yet often overlooked contributors to life on Earth. These tiny creatures play essential roles in pollination, decomposition, and maintaining ecological balance, shaping the ecosystems that we all depend on. Despite their importance, insects are often dismissed due to their size or perceived nuisance. This issue invites readers to appreciate the beauty, resilience, and complexity of insects through science, art, and poetry. By observing the intricate behaviors through art and poem, we can better understand insects and rethink our relationship with nature's small wonders. In other network news, our journal program recently aired a new video from Dr. Zoe Rosen who showcases a recent paper published in the Journal of Science Communication around the idea of motivating participation in citizen science projects through anthropomorphism. And most studies on citizen science are focusing on natural science phenomenon such as air quality or water quality. And recent work has investigated more into those participant-based outcomes, such as motivation to participate. Why do we want to participate in citizen science? And especially with the growing use of new technologies and digital platforms in citizen science projects, there's an opportunity here to draw from that human-robotic interaction literature to study participant motivation. And anthropomorphism was one way that we wanted to do that. Africa correspondent Stephanie Okeo continues to engage civic science stakeholders that are based in Africa. Here's a snippet from a recent conversation in her show. What I really had to learn working with communities and working with people from different disciplines to implement the work is that sometimes when we say certain things, even though it's the same word, we mean different things. So when we say knowledge, what do we mean? When we say research, someone from the arts might mean research in a very different way to someone who's a molecular biologist. And our radio program that airs episodes once a month on the network recently featured insights from adult science fiction author, Dr. Karen Bao, who talked with host Casey Lou Aders. So my books are for ages 12 and up through high school. And I just wrap them up in in a story, like an adventure story or a mystery story. And especially in this last book, they basically use the scientific method to solve the murder. And the one of the characters basically relates to the world through the science that she knows. So if something's happening, she'll just recall a science fact that she knows and it'll help her avoid getting caught this one time or lead her to the next clue or something. It's pretty subtle the way that I sprinkle in the scientific knowledge in there, but yeah, I think people who read this latest book can come out can come out of it knowing really anybody can become a scientist if there's the will and they'll walk away knowing a bunch of cool science facts and how science can help get you out of a lot of trouble in daily life. So at least that's and lastly, host of the Local Perspectives program on the network, Diadwara Kanath recently talked with Dr. Ryan Sinclair to learn how he studies environmental exposure alongside community scientists at the Salton Sea. Bringing kids from the high school, the nearby high school, within like three miles, or from the neighborhoods nearby the Salton Sea, bringing them to the shoreline and walking along the shore and then realizing that these kids are so interested and they are so knowledgeable, but they haven't actually been to the Salt Sea before and they grew up here. So that was kind of something, and that is 
how I really got drawn to the place. That's your Civic Side TV network update. There is a lot more you can explore across our network on video, radio, and digital print, which we publish on YouTube, LinkedIn, Spotify, X, and directly via our website at civicsciencemedia.org. We are thankful to our viewers, readers, and listeners for their ongoing support by tuning in, in addition to the support of sponsors who enable us to keep going in covering the civic nature of science. Thank you.